got a kid dead in the dome Took his ride for his Rolex and his cellular phone Guess what? Trick the next he crashed this girl Cause she had sex with this kid I thought it was interesting too throughout the Brothers album that you did with Evil E that you have a lot of songs uh, rapping toward women being very respectful toward women different things which is direct contrast to what Ice was doing a lot of the time at the mm-hmm. time so how how and why was there you know ice over here and you guys over there what what made you comfortable or want to do it that way well you know i like girls first off so and um we talk to girls in different fashions ice is ice and hen is hen so and evil is evil so we were coming in at it in a different perspective so that's like more so east coast in a sense some people think we're crazy from the east because of the um, visual females that's shown on Ice's album. So now they're used to it. Back in the day, they thought it was disrespectful. And we were just caught in the middle, as I said. You know, we're cats from Honduras, Central America that moved into gangbang land. So we got different visions on different things. You know, Ice's was long term and it was direct. So we're direct people as well, you know, but we like girls, even line like females so talking to the girls and the money was there and the executives was shining a bunch of stuff in our face and it felt good at the time so you know we were young fair enough yeah. and then uh you know with the brothers album not super blowing up and then ice having the the controversy with body count and all that going on how did that because people know stuff that happened to ice per se, but they don't know how that trickles affects the hen G's of the world. So as that's going on, how is the cop killer controversy ice leaving Warner brothers as a recording artist? How is all that affecting what you're doing in your career? Well, my family even had a bunch of money in the bank that the cops came and checked and said that he owes taxes and what have you because of the association with ice. So when the president says, you know, ICE is a bad guy, whatever this and that. He, they send red lights or red flags all over the place. So it affected us in a major way. It's, it, you know, the police was on us. We, we're not criminals or nothing, but whatever they could find within ICE and his organization, they basically try to shut down. So we were getting red flags all over the place on that note with ICE when he was the body count thing. And plus the record, you know, the rap career was affected too because, you know, it rap thing he had to take a record and put it on priority record or like and do it really quick so after that happened to continue the legacy if not it would we would have looked like ass you know so i just did press releases like he should before warner brothers did theirs and i said yo i'm separating from warner what have you it was a good ride and we moved on so it was a wee thing you know my thing with my career that was a, a nice little seasoning that i experienced um within my career but i'm always 24 7 down with ice and my brother so so what uh, what did you learn from that controversy um that this industry is crazy it's bigger than us you know that um it's fun at the same time we was running through different cities where it was telling ice to not do body count um, cop killer and he said they told me not to do this but i said fuck them and he did it anyway had to run out of the cities and we were just having fun, man, being young and thank God we're not locked up or murdered like what's happening today, man. We had a lot of fun making a lot of money. Ice, fortunately, is still on TV, you know, so the legacy, our legacy continues. Loyalty is the best royalty. We still talk to each other here and there. I visited him two weeks ago for um, and set up a show that he rocked with MC8 that you were there and our, our artist Namek. So we're having fun and moving forward and the higher he gets, the higher we get. We right there with him. We was there in the beginning. We're still here. So peace to George and the We ain't say his name, but he's part of the fan band. So, of course. Always shout yeah. out to George for making it happen on every level. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. And speaking Don't of doubt. the prior speaking of priority, you you did a bunch of musical stuff with Ice on those albums as well. And mm-hmm. on the sixth return of the reel with the uh Dear Homie, I mm-hmm. was always interested in the different uh the different letters that were written to the different people at different parts of their lives. Mm-hmm. So break down uh, what the discussion was making that song. Well, dear homie was my friend Godfather. They call him Monster Beats Online. Um, he thought of the lyrical idea and we did the music collectively. 
and um brought it to ice and ice heard it he liked it he got on it and it was touching you know godfather was locked up a lot when he was younger um and, and when he was younger so he just was you know it's the gang bang language in a sense i'm not a gang banger but i influenced them on saying positive stuff that they could talk to their people so it was just some cool stuff i'm glad you like that record man that's a deep one yeah it's very powerful and i think that's what it's funny because my daughter knows ice from the commercials and my parents know ice as a TV actor and, you know, different people know him for different things. But I think as time goes on, we got to remember that ice made all these phenomenal records that have all this super deep detailed meaning. And, and that to me is something we can't ever forget or ever yeah. diminish because these records are super powerful and yes. very, very influential. That's where and, the fans come, yeah. Right. And that's why I was glad that you wanted to talk about it. And <laughs> but that's you know, obviously a lot of the stuff you did was syndicate, but I also remember too the uh Spice One uh doing some production with him with the ballin and uh mine on my money. Uh, uh a little bit MC after Bree, MC Breed as well, rest in peace. Yes, yeah, yuck, yuck mouth as well from the Looney, they was on that too. Yeah. So, so how how when and why did you get that opportunity to work with Spice on those songs? Well, I was walk, working with a young, um, amazing producer back in the days, and um, his name is Bobby Ross Abili. He's now the music director for Usher as Red is residence in Vegas with his brother um, Izzy. They um, they're dope. So we worked together. We did a few records together, and um, Bobby was the music, the uh, the majority of the music came straight out of church. So, and I got the guys over. So I'm spicing them, like, let's do something. Yeah, I have relationships with everybody. I used to have the studio up on the hill. So he said, come pull up. So we showed them a couple of records. We tailor made some, they came upstairs, you know, had their medication so they could feel good. And we were up in the sky, way up on Sunset Plaza, um, did three records, I believe. I think one of them records we did for Shaquille O'Neal as well. The Steel, I think. I think I yeah. did that with Ross. Yeah, so. Yeah, I've yeah, been man. to that. I, I was at that studio too. That was an amazing, yeah. uh, amazing studio. But when um, the thing I'm intrigued about is with working with Spice One and MC Breed in particular, is after being with Rhyme Syndicate for so long and working with the crew for so long, as you were branching out. And at this point, Spice One, he's been in, you know, the Menace to Society soundtrack. He's had gold mm -hmm. records. He's a big artist. Yes. So, how was it, what was it like getting into his mode and his lane and getting used to working with him as a, such a big artist too? Spice is so easy to work with. He's so cool. He's so real. You know, he's crazy as fuck, but Spice is really cool. So, and he rhymes. He's a lyricist. I can work with anyone that knows how to spit lyrics. You know, that's just the, the, the culture, you know? So I, I've been doing this for quite a while. So when we linked up, you know, we were basically trying to find Tupac since they grew up together. After that, I did a record with Tupac one day at a time. Um, so, and I got Tupac myself, actually. I was just not understanding why his people that he grew up with couldn't bring him up on the hill. So I just did a lot of legwork and my relationship with a lot of these cats are cool. So when we talk, we said we got some heat. They say bet. They even um, pull up before we even have the music knowing that we have some cool music. So they come up, we vibe out a little bit and rock a couple of songs. You know, peace to Bobby Ross Avila. That's my man on that note. So, yeah, and also yeah, on that note, we got to shout out MC Breed, uh, RIP to him as well. And That's I wanted right. you to speak on his uh, special qualities because being from Flint, Michigan, but then moving to Atlanta, mm -hmm. working with Pac, doing all the great things he did with Too Short, et cetera, he, I think, is one of those amazing artists that I think also doesn't get a lot of shine. So, yeah. Since you worked with him uh, directly, what did you think was distinctive and stood out about MC Breed? He, he wasn't from L.A. He was from his um, section, and he brought that with him, and he was crazy cool. You know, so I don't know if it's because I'm an Aries that I'm sit, sitting back like this saying that it was it was crazy cool. I can't work with fools, man. I mean, you could tell in the music it won't come out right. So the... Reed was, I was sad when he passed, man. He was really cool. I wanted to see more of him. 
I was actually, we were each other's fans, you can say, for the guys that you're asking me how did I feel about working with them. We kind of honored each other's history. So when we got together, we seen we were real ones. We weren't the ones that you see. It's different when you see them in a video or somewhere. So we were all lined up together, and it was cool. You know, it's cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm an Aries, too, so I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cool. You lay back, and it's whack or it's not. I don't know what else to say. You know? Right. Cats are really cool cats. They can rhyme. I want you to listen real close to me. I'm gonna ask you some real simple questions and I want some real simple answers. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. You said that you couldn't have possibly been at the crime scene at 11.15 because you went to bookstore my, my audio book and my hardcover book at 11.15 when the crime scene occurred in Soren's book. The history of gangster rap. So you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying the books. Right, right. At 11.15, I was, I was at the bookstore at, at 11.15 and when, when I, bought, I bought the books and accidentally left them at the store. So at 11.15, you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying books, right? At, at eleven fifteen, I was. We we was when I was leaving. It was, it was some people coming in, and I I, I forgot to grab. But you, you you don't remember who what they look people, like. What would they look like or nothing? Right? No. Hmm. So. Twelve fifteen. You went to the bookstore buying my audio book and hardcover book and Soren's book at twelve fifteen. So you couldn't have been at the scene because you were buying the books, right? Yeah, at twelve exactly. At twelve at twelve fifteen exactly. I was at the bookstore. <laughs> You know you're not fucked up. Which, which no, one? First you said you were at the bookstore at 11.15 and then you said you was 12.15. You know you're not fucked up. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. Man, you, you confusing me, man. So, you get my book, my audio book, 40 years in Soren's book, History of Gangster Rap, and if you don't, you know you're not fucked up, right? Man, the more those cops ask me questions, the more I wish I bought them motherfucking books. <laughs>